Hello, Brad here from 999 Know How. In this video, I'll be going through the principles of trauma care, focusing on the kinetics of trauma, how to predict injuries, the mechanism of injury, and both scene and patient assessment methods. So, let's get started. The kinetics of trauma help us understand how different forces affect the body and can lead to injury. Key factors to consider are the speed of impact, as higher speeds often result in more severe injuries, the type of collision, the nature of the collision such as frontal, rear end or rollovers, patient position, as patients who are ejected or in certain positions during impact are at greater risk of serious injury. Understanding mechanisms aids in predicting any potential injuries. The three main types of traumatic injury are blunt trauma, resulting from impacts often causing fractures and internal bleeding, penetrating trauma, which are injuries from sharp objects like knives or bullets, often causing internal and external bleeding, blast trauma, which are injuries from explosions, potentially leading to both blunt and penetrating injuries. When approaching an emergency scene, a comprehensive assessment is essential. You must ensure the scene is safe before proceeding. Check for hazards such as traffic, fire or unstable structures. Understanding how the injury occurred will help anticipate the types of injuries that might have been sustained. If multiple patients are involved, prioritise care accordingly. Once it's safe to do so, conduct a thorough patient assessment. Start with a primary survey using the C, A, B, C, D, E approach to identify any life-threatening conditions. Then move on to a secondary survey which is a detailed examination using the sample and Socrates method to gather history. Burns can range from minor to severe. A first degree burn affects only the outer skin layer causing redness and pain. A second degree burn involves deeper layers of tissue leading to blistering and intense pain. And a third degree burn extends through all layers of skin, causing white or charred skin with limited or no sensation in the affected area. For treating burns, remove the patient from the burn source. Kill the burn with running water for at least 20 minutes where possible. Cover it with a clean non-stick dressing or cling film if available. And monitor for signs of shock or airway compromise, especially with patients with extensive burns. Treatment strategies depend on your assessment findings. Any bleeding must be controlled, using direct pressure, dressings or tourniquets for life-threatening, catastrophic bleeding. Airway management. Ensure the patient has a clear, patent airway, especially in the unconscious patient. If needed, insert an airway adjunct such as an oral pharyngeal or a nasal pharyngeal airway. Shock management. Lay the person down and elevate the legs and feet slightly unless you think that this may cause pain or further injury. Keep the person still and warm. Proper immobilisation and extrication are vital in trauma care and this is to prevent further injury. Cervical collars stabilise the neck to prevent spinal movement. Scoops and vacuum mattresses secure the patient during transport and keep the spine in a neutral alignment. Pelvic binders, which are devices used to compress the pelvis in people with suspected pelvic fractures and this is in an effort to stop any internal bleeding. In a road traffic collision, Assess the mechanism of injury. Was the impact frontal or side on? 
as this will help predict injuries like head trauma or spinal damage. Perform a primary survey using the C, A, B, C, D, E approach. Control catastrophic bleeding using direct pressure or tourniquets. Check the airway, look for any obstructions and listen for abnormal sounds such as strider or gurgling. If the patient is unconscious, consider airway manoeuvres. Assess the patient's breathing, looking for any signs of respiratory distress, such as use of accessory muscles or cyanosis. Auscultate for lung sounds and observe for any chest injuries, such as a flailed chest. Now assess circulation, check for a pulse, assess skin colour, temperature and capillary refill time. Next, move on to disability. Check the patient's level of consciousness using the AVPU scale. And finally, expose the patient to identify any hidden injuries whilst ensuring to maintain their dignity and warmth. Look for signs of trauma such as bruising or lacerations and cover the patient appropriately to prevent hypothermia. Following the primary survey assessment, you can prioritise treatment based on the findings. Always remember that in an emergency scenario, time is critical and effective communication between the team is key. After stabilising any life-threatening conditions, you can move on and use the sample and Socrates method to help gather information from the patient or bystanders. For penetrating injuries like a stab wound, the primary survey would focus on controlling any bleeding, which relates directly to the C in the C, A, B, C, D, E approach. Once any bleeding is controlled, continue with the primary survey to assess for any other injuries and consider potential shock from blood loss. Once the primary survey is complete, you can move on to a focused history taking using the sample and Socrates method. Perform a primary survey using the C, A, B, C, D, E approach. Always immobilise the patient during the disability phase of your primary survey to prevent further injury. The mechanism injury gives you critical insight into possible fractures or internal trauma. Using the sample and Socrates methods will help you gather information from the patient or any bystanders. Let's quickly recap the key points covered in this video, starting with scene safety. Scene safety is your first priority. Always ensure the scene is safe before approaching any patient. This protects you, your team and the patient. Check for any potential hazards such as traffic, any fires or any unstable structures. The kinetics of trauma help us predict potential injuries based on the forces and the mechanism. Conduct a thorough scene and patient assessment using the C, A, B, C, D approach starting with catastrophic bleeding before moving on to a focused history taking. Use appropriate immobilisation techniques to keep the patient safe and prevent further injury. Scene safety remains critical throughout. Continuously reassess for hazards and adjust your approach accordingly. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped provide a quick insight into the principles of trauma care, which you can apply in your practice. If you found the video helpful, please like, subscribe, and follow us on social media to help support the channel. Have any suggestions for future videos? Leave a comment below.